the the notion is very simple. Putin wants um, an inexperienced candidate to win the presidency. His first choice, of course, would be someone who is from a, the former party of regions, who is distinctly pro-Russian. Uh, but since that's unlikely, the second choice, uh, which would be in the ideal choice, the dream choice, as I call it, would be Mr. Zelensky, Volodymyr Zelensky, the comedian who has no experience, who may have some dubious connections with oligarchs, but in any case has no experience. Um, and of course, Ukraine is facing an existential threat from Russia and will continue to do so for the foreseeable future. So the very last person Ukraine needs as a candidate is Mr. Zelensky. By the same token, Mr. Putin's favorite is obviously Mr. Zelensky. So that's the basic thrust of the argument in that particular uh, piece. Uh, the follow up to that, of course, is the question of then who would be the best choice for Ukraine. Um, and I think the only two serious candidates are Timoshenko and Poroshenko. Those are the ones who are currently leading in the polls. Um, and personally, uh, again, I, unlike many of my friends who think Timoshenko would be a disaster, I'm less inclined to think so. On the other hand, I do think that Poroshenko deserves credit for the fact that Ukraine is doing reasonably well in all sorts of ways. Um, he's a known quantity in the West. He has good relations with Western powers. Um, he's done a fairly good job, as I've suggested, in a number of different categories. Well, the last thing Ukraine needs is discontinuity at this point. So just as Mr. Zelensky would represent enormous discontinuity. So too, Poroshenko represents continuity. He, he's been able to maintain Ukraine um, on the path of reform. I know some people disagree. Uh, the country has changed and he also has a formula which has been fairly successful for maintaining Russia at bay and at the same time for maintaining Western support um, so I think for those reasons, he would be the preferred candidate. Now, will he win? That, of course, is a different issue, because as you and your uh, listeners know, um, he's not very popular. On the other hand, he seems to be neck and neck with Timoshenko, which may mean that his chances are pretty good. We'll see. Um, I can't imagine a serious candidate emerging in the next few days um, if there had been one of these secret candidates, he or she would have been talked about, at least in the press. But I'm reasonably certain that there will be no, no surprise. I can't even imagine who that would be, frankly. Well, well, the, there are two points here. One is, why are people upset? Well, they're upset for obvious reasons, because as all of this change has been taking place, living standards have not increased as quickly as they were expected to increase in 2014. But the reasons for that are several. Some of them are objective, so to speak. Some of them are subjective. Remember that in 2014 and 15, Ukraine's GDP shrank by about 20, 25 percent, thanks to the war in the southeast. That has nothing to do with Poroshenko, Timoshenko, or anybody Putin's fault. And since 2016, Ukraine's economy has been growing at three, three and a half percent, which is, by world standards, is pretty good. That's not good enough for Ukraine. Ukraine needs to grow seven or eight percent. Everybody understands that. But so there has been improvements. Living standards have actually increased. Salaries have improved. But that said, expectations are significantly higher. Ukrainians wanted to live in Europe in 2014. That's why it was called the Euro Maidan. <laughs> it's always the incumbent who has to take the fall for whatever it is that that's taking place. And then to insult to injury from the point of the people who were responsible for the Yanukovych years, the people who are responsible for the deaths on the Maidan, have not been brought to justice. Um, now, frankly, if none of these individuals had been brought to justice, would that improve living standards? Of course not. <laughs> They'd still be where they are at the moment. But that said, people want payback and they haven't gotten paid. They're angry. So I understand. On the other hand, why do I insist that Ukraine has made enormous change? Well, one reason is because it's manifestly clear every time you go to Ukraine, 
and especially and i think it's clearer for us than it is for ukrainians because we go there every few months or every you know once a year twice a year three times a year and we see the changes it's just remarkable have changed for the better at the same time most of the reforms that have been adopted by poroshenko uh, are institutional and structural reforms they're not visible 